right now my VA is booking me about one to three appointments every single day and he's alone generating me almost $10,000 a month just from him. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can get a VA like that for yourself so that you can make the income that you wanna make so that you can get more clients and scale the business, okay? So let's jump into it. So let's dive into this. I'm gonna give you the job posting templates, the interview scripts and the contract templates and everything like that. But before we go ahead and do that and go actually show you how to hire these killer VAs, I need to show you some fundamental stuff first, okay? About actually hiring these people. So. Let's dive into this, right? We're gonna go to the VA mindset, the value per appointment dichotomy, the job posting templates, then the scripts, and then contract templates, okay? Let's get into it. So before we try and hire VAs, right, that are not only gonna make us a ton of money for your agency, but also allow you to focus on the business rather than just like doing all the manual labor inside it, we have to actually figure out why in the world, that's an R, they would want to work hard for you. Now, there's four things that are going to make a VA work hard for you. Okay, Number one is stability. Number two is environment. Number three is opportunity for growth. And number four is pay. So let's briefly go over these and then we will get into how we can get them making us as much money as humanly possible. So stability. There are a lot of VAs looking for a stable job online, right? So most of them, they understand that people are like most of the people looking for VAs are startups, small companies, or business owners with little to no experience. And it makes them basically scared of working for you because if they sign on with you and then you don't have enough money to pay them in like one to two months, then they're in a shitty situation. So they really look for actually being able to work for you long term and having that stable income. And to be able to kind of do this and, and help out your situation, it may seem small right? Assuming you're a small business owner, obviously. But when you are speaking to your VA, you want to appear at least as if you are a seasoned professional, like wearing proper attire, talking to them like a normal professional would like don't seem like like you don't want to be an asshole, obviously. Um, but you also want to do what you can to look more professional. So just small things like that. And it's just going to kind of elevate your status and make them think that you are maybe a bigger business owner than you actually are. Now, I'm not saying to lie, right? You should not lie to them. If they ask you how long you've been in business for, you tell them. But um, you do kind of want to basically show them like you're, you're serious about this. You also want to mention to your VA that you plan on keeping them for the long term, potentially upwards of a year, but only if they work hard. This is going to give them that extra incentive to work super hard for you because they know that if they work for you and they work hard for you for a long enough period of time and make you a lot of money, obviously, they're going to be able to stay with you for a very long time, right? And that's the truth. If they're making you a lot of money, you're not going to let them go, okay? So you have to tell them that. So if you're able to do this, right, they're going to see you, again, more as an authority and uh, want to come work for you even more. And they'll work, work even harder because they will want to be able to, to push towards that stable income, okay, that a lot of them want. Number two is environment. So the next thing that VAs look for when they choose to work hard for someone, right, is basically like the company or the person that they're actually working for. So a lot of people um, say like when they have like, even if you have like a super tiny team, like it's not important to have uh, a strong team culture. I completely disagree with that. Like obviously they, they say like, wait till you're making multi six figures, seven figures, and then you can start looking at like a mission and a vision and all this stuff. I think you should do it from the start because when you have kind of like something to push towards, right? And something to like strive towards as a team together and something that actually can like bond you guys, even if it's just you and your VAs, your whole team, something that can connect you guys. Um, and like you're working toward a similar goal is going to really propel your VA not like to like think like they're doing something like they're working for something beyond themselves. So for example, our company, we're all focused on, on basically becoming the best versions of ourselves, helping our clients become the best versions of ourselves, all this stuff. So basically the entire goal of the company that we're, um, that we're working towards, right, is to to help people become just better, right? And something that we do, um, we host our basically our team conversations on Slack. Is three times a week, every single person in the company has to post a gym picture, and if they don't, they basically get fired. So that's like a really cool incentive that we have to make sure, um, uh, basically, uh, everyone's kind of doing what they're supposed to do. We have the most Jack VAs in the game, so don't even try and come close to us on that. If you put my VA in a boxing rink. Um, a boxing ring with, with yours, it's not even going to be close, okay? Anyways, that's kind of besides the point, but you kind of get the idea. You like want to have that, that strong community together. Number three is opportunity for growth. So 
when you're on an interview, right, with different VAs, you want to find a reason, like the actual reason why they're looking for a job. And obviously they just want to make money. And this is the same thing as a sales call, where if you ask someone like why they want XYZ problem fix, they're going to be saying like, oh, I want to make more money. But you actually have to find out why they want that, like what they want their life to look like in five to 10 years so that you can tie basically the result of them working with you to achieving or like basically them working hard for you to achieving that goal. So if they say they want to have like a management position so that they can make enough money to retire their parents or like whatever they, they want to do or like they basically like provide um, for their family, be able to go out more, um, be able to travel a little bit, right? Like you want to figure out what they actually want and then you want to be able to give it to them. So for example, my VA, um, in the next like year or two, he wants to become a manager. He wants to be able to, to travel with his family and everything like that. And I asked him how much money he needs to be able to make that. And he told me the number and I'm like, well, that's a reasonable number. So basically I need you to, to be able to make that much money. You would have to be in a management position. So here are the skills that you need to be able to become a manager. And then I laid that path out for him. So now he's basically working hard to be able to get those skills. Um, to be able to achieve that goal. And, and that's basically how it works. It's the same sales. So like once you find what they want to accomplish, right now you can basically position your job as the gap in between them being where they are right now and what, where they want to be. So that's basically how it works. And if they were to work hard every single day for you and help you grow the business by saving you more time, you'll be able to give them a management or whatever kind of position um, they want to have, not necessarily whatever position, right? You're not going to make them the COO, but right. They're going to see like some kind of a reason um, as to why they might want to work with you and help you accomplish your future goals. Number four is pay. So the easiest way to get the best VAs, right? And this is just obvious. And the ones that are going to help you sign the most clients is just by paying them more than average. Now there's obviously a diminishing return to this. Like you're not going to pay a VA 10 bucks an hour because it's probably just a waste of money. Um, but if you're paying them $2 an hour, like to some random VA in like Bangladesh, right? No offense to anyone in Bangladesh watching this, but Filipino VAs are where it's at. Um, they're probably going to be shit. So personally, I would start at 450 an hour uh, and then increase that by 10% every three to six months. So right now I kind of switched my, like one of my VAs is on a, a monthly basis. So I'm paying him 800 bucks a month. Um, he's just managing my social media accounts and then sending out outreach messages to the people, like obviously to, to prospects on those social media accounts, right? And like basically those appointments, right? he's bringing me a loan, like just his appointments that he's bringing me is making me anywhere from five to 10 K in profit per month, like literally just from him, um, which is insane. Like one VA can legit bring you that much money. So that's basically how that works. Now, moving on to the next section, right? Um, the value per appointment dichotomy. So basically when you're hiring VAs, um, most people get bogged down in the reasons why a VA could be actually helpful. Okay. What well, you want to think about, right? is consider the like the proper factors of value that a VA is actually bringing to the business. Um, and then from those factors, you can decide whether a VA is actually going to bring you return on your investment. So essentially, right, a VA is not there to just like magically fix your home booking system, right? They're, they're there to save time and multiply the outputs, right? So essentially what that means is maybe you're only able to commit three hours a day to appointment booking. If you give the system to your VA, right? They can do it for eight hours a day. And by the nature of them working more than you, they'll probably book more appointments than you if you can teach them properly. So, right. A VA is not there to fix your appointment booking systems. Most people think they can just hire a VA, say cold call and book me more appointments and then have appointments magically just pop up in the calendar. So there's like a skill to that. Um, and you're not going to find those skills at like even $5 an hour. You're probably not going to find those skills at $10 an hour, right? Like, you would have to actually pay someone like an agency or like someone like a freelancer who knows what they're doing to book appointments. And then you can like, once you pay more money, obviously that's kind of when you're going to be able to, to just tell them to book appointments and then they'll have the systems in place for you already. But when you're hiring a VA, you have to give them the systems. If you're hiring a VA, right. And you just tell them to cold call, right. They don't know what that like looks like. Maybe they've cold called before, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have success with you. Right. If you don't walk them through every step by step, process on what you actually need them to do. So the purpose of having a VA is to give them a system that already works so that when you, so basically this, so that you can work on more important things. So when you hiring, when you hire a VA, right, you're adjusting the value per appointment input, meaning instead of paying time 
for each appointment that you're booking, right? You're paying money for each appointment that you're booking, right? And money and time are basically the same thing. You can pay someone money and they'll give you back time. Um, you can expend your time and then someone will pay you back money. And it's just about increasing the value of your time, but that's a whole nother conversation. So before you outsource to a VA, right? You need to ask yourself the following questions. How long does it take for you to book one appointment? What percent effectiveness will the VA perform at if compared to you? Um, and this is something that you kind of have to judge based on how much money you're willing to spend on talent as well as how good your SOPs are. Okay, the better your SOPs are and the more money you can spend on hiring quality talent, the higher percent this is going to be. Um, and it also depends on the system that you're using. So if you're teaching a VA to cold call, that's a lot more difficult of a skill to teach than how to respond to cold email inbox. Um, so that's that, right? Now, and you also need to know how much you're willing to pay the VA. So let's say you spend three hours to book one appointment. Let's say your VA is going to be 75% as effective as you, right? So this would say you have like a pretty good SOP um, kind of system that you have um, for training VAs. That means your VA is probably going to spend four hours to book one appointment. And if you pay your VA $4.50 an hour, right? This means instead of spending three hours to book one appointment, you're spending $18 to book one appointment. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is three hours of your time worth 18 bucks, right? Is one hour of your time worth more than six bucks? The answer to that is probably yes. Maybe it's not, but the answer to that is probably yes, right? Then hiring VA is probably worth it. Now, most people don't have this kind of a system where they're booking three appointments in one hour. Um, or sorry, one appointment in three hours, right? But if you do, right, and you're able to actually teach the VA properly so that they're 75% as effective as you, like you're paying, like you're, you're basically buying six hours, you're basically buying an hour of time for six bucks, which is a very good deal, if you ask me. And the difference, right, again, like the difference between hiring a $2 and $5 an hour VA is the percent effectiveness. So again, like if you hire some random VA for two bucks an hour in Bangladesh, their percent effectiveness might be like 10%. Right, um, but if you hire a, a VA in the Philippines for five bucks an hour, the percent effectiveness might be like 70, or like if you have really good SOPs, it might be 80. Um, so that's basically that. And obviously, eight times 10% is 80, and eight times two dollars is 16 dollars. So you're actually getting a very big discount, you're paying less dollars per appointment by doing that. Um, and you can do the calculations here, right? So that's basically that, right? Now, with this information. Um, you should be able to know whether it is worth hiring a VA or not, okay? And if it is, then we'll jump into these job templates, the interview scripts, and the contract templates so that you can hire, obviously, the best ones. Um, so this is the job template that we use. Um, there's going to be a link, first link in the description, to download all this stuff. Um, we'll have to download this, like, big VA recruiting document SOP, uh, and then all these little things will be linked in here. So this is basically this. You just want to go in here uh, and essentially fill out this, fill out this, um, fill out this, right? Um, basically how this works, um, you just say what skills you need them to have, um, what kind of computer that you need them to have, right? Basically just good Wi-Fi and not a shit computer, um, what they're going to be doing, right? So it's going to depend on the system you're using to book appointments, uh, and then how many hours they're going to be working, right? We have this in here as well. Um, I make them message me the number seven when applying um, to know if they actually read the thing and paid attention to detail, because if they're not paying attention to detail of the actual job post, they're probably not a very good hire. So that's what I do. And here is where you can post them. So personally, I just use Upwork. Um, Upwork works very, very well. You have that option as well when you post the job to pay like an extra 40 bucks. Uh, and that is going to be worth it basically every single time. Like if you're not willing to pay 40 bucks to get like triple the amount of applicants, you probably shouldn't be hiring. <laughs> um, and then onlinejobs.ph, I have not used, but I've heard it's good. Uh, same with uh, VA Facebook groups. It's This is just free. Um, so it, it's probably good to try, right? Only hire Filipinos. This is just a rule that I use. Obviously, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I've had very good experience um, with them. They're very cheap and they're very hardworking and uh, and they speak really good English. So that's that, right? Um, here is the interview script that I use. So it's, this is basically just a script, a spreadsheet that you can check mark off. So what I do, right, um, is I scale them on a score of one to 10 for all these questions. So this is not really a question. Just This is just, did they arrive on time? So you just put a four here if they arrived on time. Um, and then put a zero if they didn't, or you can just put a one here, right? Um, and then you are going to be, you're going to ask them like what you're, what you, when you want them to work. And if they say no to that, then you just put zero and then they're not going to be able to work for you. Like these are must haves. Um, like this is the, like these brown colors. Like if they don't, 
if they are working another job, we're not going to hire them. If they, um, like, if they're not able to meet our time requirements, then we're not going to hire them. If they're not on time, we're not going to hire them. So we just put ones here. Uh, basically, what, what these numbers are, they just basically kind of add up to give them a merit score. Um, so you can just put your different numbers in here um, as you see fit. So you go into here, like outline your expertise in the field. So basically just give me a rundown of like what you know about what we're doing. Um, and obviously this is like a big one as well. So four is the highest, again, one is the lowest. Oh, that's not what we want either. We don't, you don't want to edit this like darker gray one, by the way. This is like the multiple. Um, sorry, this is the actual value. The multiple is already calculated in here. Um, so you don't want to change that actually, right? Um, so you just added these like gray numbers. What are your biggest three mistakes? Right. If you ask them what your biggest three mistakes are and how you fix, how do you fix them? If they give you like some theoretical reason as to how they would fix a mistake, like you repeat the thing, like give me an actual example. Do you have a real life example of a specific time where you solved a specific problem that you made? Right. Like you want actual answers. If they don't give you legit answers, make them say the thing again. And that's really going to help you like get out the people who like don't know what they're talking about. Right. Um, and who actually haven't had any experience, right? How do you overcome adversity and challenges in your job, right? So this one I would even change. I would say, can you give me an example of when you overcame adversity or a challenge in your job? Um, and then you rank them on that. Tell me about a time where you had to learn something new. Like if they tell you like, oh, well, when I learned something new, I like to take a lot of notes and not like you, you want, you, you just cut them off. You just say, no. Um, so the question was, um, can you tell me about a specific time where there was like a certain thing that you actually had to learn something new? Like, what did you actually learn? Uh, and when did this happen? Right? Like, what was the actual time? Can you tell me a time, like an actual specific example of when you solved a problem without your boss, right? And you go through all these, right? Tell me about a, retire a time where you went above and beyond the requirements for a project. This is a big one as well. And then these are huge. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Right? If it's like, oh, well, I just want to, I don't know, something useless. <laughs> Um, I just want to, I don't know like, if it's, like, if it's not like I want to be able to like help my family or like do something important, then like don't even consider them um, because they're not going to actually probably care about working for you. Um, why do you want to get there? Right. They have to have a reason as to why they want to do that. And it has to be important. Um, if they're like, well, I just want to make more money. Then it's like, that's not really like if they say, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Like I see myself as a manager. And why do you want to get there so I can make more money? If, if it's like that, right, obviously you want to go deeper. It's like, well, what, what would you need that money for? So that's basically that you want to actually figure out why. What are you going to make sure to do that happen? What are you going to do to make sure that happens? Right. So actually cementing it in their mind, what they actually need to do, who's counting on you to succeed. Um, and then that's another one. If they are like, oh, I'm just by myself, um, then it's like not that good. Right. Um, how confident are you in what you do? So this is just basically asking them to scale rank themselves on a scale of one to four. This isn't really important because they could just say all fours, which is fine. Like we actually want them to say that because we want to see they're confident. Right. Um, and then here, right. Do you have any questions? This is probably the biggest one. If they have no questions other than like, what am I getting paid? Like they're obviously not very, they don't care that much about the job. You want them to ask like questions about you, questions about the business, questions about their role, questions about like all the best things to do in their role to have the most success, all these things. That's what you want to actually hear from them so that you know they're legit and actually serious about wanting to work with you. Technical fit, right? So this is basically just like your judgment. Do you think they actually know what they're talking about and are going to be good at what they do? And then culture fit, um, this is like, do they actually, like I've hired people who are like worse technical fits and higher culture fit. Just like, like literally like three weeks ago, I hired like another part-time VA um, and he was definitely the second best option. Um, but I picked him because I liked him a lot more than the first best option um, who just wouldn't stop talking. Um, and I don't, I mean, there's like a, there's, this kind of like a, a thing that I have with, it's, I don't know, it's, it's my problem. Um, but I, I just vibed a lot better with the other guy. So I hired him instead. So, and then you have your merit score. Um, and that's basically that. So there's also a contract template in here. Got all the resources for you. Um, once you decide from these scripts who's actually the best person, and you can just go by the merit score that you gave them, um, then you just send them over the contract using DocuSign. Um, you want to fill these things out. You want you want to go file, 
uh, and then make a copy and then make your own copy. Uh, don't try and like last time I posted one of these documents, every single like there was like 20 people who requested to edit this document, make your own copy because if I let everyone like go through this document and just edit it, it's just going to be destroyed in like five minutes. So click file, make a copy, call it whatever you want, make a copy, and then you can edit it as much as you want. Okay. So that's basically everything you're going to need to know to hire a VA who's going to book you a shit ton of appointments. Um, if you want, obviously this document, it's linked in the description. If you want help booking more appointments uh, and actually installing the systems that you're going to need for these VAs into your business, um, there's the second link in the description for that. Um, and maybe I can help you out. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next one.